So I'll repeat that. There are specific chemicals that when we are consciously aware of a change we want to make, or even just that we want to make some change, chemicals are released in the brain that allow us the opportunity to make those changes. A few years ago, I was at a, a course and a woman came up to me and she said, you know, I she said, I just have to tell you that every time you speak, it really stresses me out. And I said, well, heard that before but um do you want to be more specific and she said yeah your tone of voice reminds me of somebody that i i had a really terrible experience with i said well okay well i can't change my voice but i really appreciate that you acknowledge that and it also will help um explain why you you know seem to cringe every time i speak which i hadn't noticed until then but after that i did notice she had a very immediate and kind of visceral response to my speech perhaps some of you are having that right now but in any event over the period of this two-week course she would come back every once in a while and say, you know what, I think just by telling you that your voice was really difficult for me to listen to, it's actually becoming more tolerable to me. And by the end, we actually became pretty good friends and we're still in touch. And so what this says is that the recognition of something, whether or not that's an emotional thing or a desire to learn something else is actually the first step in neuroplasticity. And that's because our nervous system has two broad sets of functions. Some of those functions are, are reflexive. Things like our breathing, our heart rate are obvious ones. But other aspects are reflexive, like our ability to walk. If I get up out of this chair and walk out of the door, I don't think about each step that I'm taking. And that's because I learned how to walk during development. But when we decide that we're going to shift some sort of behavior or some reaction or some new piece of information that we want to learn is something that we want to bring into our consciousness, that awareness is a remarkable thing because it cues the brain and the rest of the nervous system, that when we engage in those reflexive actions going forward, that those reflexive actions are no longer fated to be reflexive. The first step in neuroplasticity is recognizing that you want to change something. And you should immediately say, well, kids don't go into school and say, oh, I want to learn language or I want to learn social interactions. And that's the beauty of childhood. The whole brain has this switch flipped that is making change possible. But after that, we have to be deliberate. We have to know what it is exactly that we want to change. Or if we don't know exactly what it is that we want to change, we at least have to know that we want to change something about some specific experience. In this case, I believe that she came and told me that my voice was really awful for her to listen to not to make me feel bad or for any other reason, except that she wanted it to not be the case. And she knew I wasn't going to stop talking. So she decided to call it to her consciousness and mine as well. So that's important. If you want to learn something or you want to change your nervous system in any way, whether or not it's because of some impairment or because of something that you want to acquire, a cognitive skill, a motor skill, an emotional skill, the first thing is recognizing what that thing is. And that often can be the hardest thing to identify. Mm -hmm.